In this video I'm going to show you how you can load WordPress post content into our JavaScript Lightbox pop-up. So what I mean by that is if we take a look at the testing that I've been using, <clears throat> if, if I look at this category here when I click on one of the links to a post, refreshes the page and loads in a new page template. So rather than that, what I'm going to get it to do is something more like this. So we click on some content and it loads in in a pop-up overlaying the current web page, the new content. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. Uh, so as I said, I'm going to start with the test theme that I've been using all semester, um, which at the moment just loads everything in, into a new page. So what I'm going to need for this is a um, Lightbox JavaScript plugin and the one I'm going to use for this example is called Magnific Pop-Up and um, there's a whole bunch of these and they more or less do the same thing um, and so this should, technique should work with, with um, most of the other ones um, in, in, in a similar way. But anyway, this is the one I'm going to use and first of all I need to um, download some files so this plugin will have a JavaScript file and a CSS file and the way that I get those is by clicking on this build tool link here and it comes up with um, a bunch of checkboxes here which allow you to include or not include certain things uh, I'm just going to keep them all checked and hit generate build here and it comes up with uh, some code here which, I'm, which is the JavaScript file so I'm just going to copy uh, this JavaScript code here and I'm going to jump over to my editor and I'm going to uh, create a JavaScript file for this. So here's my theme folder here. I'm going to uh, just create a new directory to hold my JavaScript files and I'm going to call that JS. And then I'll create a new file in here which I will call magnific-popup.js and in here I will paste the code that I copied from uh, that website. Okay, so by default it's all one line because it's all compressed but that doesn't matter. All you need to do is paste that in and uh, save the file. Okay, and the second thing I need is the CSS file uh, which has all the style information for the, the Lightbox pop-up. So I'm going to click this link back over on the the website here to the CSS version. Okay, and again that will give me some CSS code. I can you can either save this file or just copy that and do the same thing I did before. Um, <clears throat> where I will create a new file and actually I'll put this in. No, I'll just create a new file. Uh, let's see, new file which I'll call magnific popupcss Okay and um, and I will paste this CSS code into there and then save that file. Okay so now I've got those two files, I need to include them in my template file uh, in my theme for them to work. So uh, I could just include them in my header file here, but really the only place that I'm going to need them is uh, on this page here. Essentially these, these two pages which both uh, use my uh, category.php template. So uh, there's no sense really including them anywhere where I don't need them, so I'm just going to include them here. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that is uh, using um, some WordPress functions that allow me to, uh, while calling a style or a script to be included later on, still make them be output in, in the header. So what I'm going to do is at the very top of my category.php template uh, I'm going to first of all uh, include the CSS style 
And the way that I do that is, um, well, first of all, let me create my PHP tags. Okay, I'm going to use a WordPress function called WP underscore MQ underscore style. Now you can look up this function in the documentation if you want to see what it does. Okay, um, but essentially it takes um, two parameters. Firstly, we give this style a name so that WordPress can identify it. I'm just going to call it magnific hyphen pop up. Okay, and the second parameter we pass is the important one. This is going to be the path to the actual CSS file. Um, now, because again, this is WordPress, we can't just hard code the file path here. Uh, we need to use a WordPress function to output the directory and then add uh, the, the file name ourselves. So I'm going to use a function called get underscore starsheet uh, directory URI. Okay, so that will point to my, my theme directory or the directory that my style sheet is in. And then I'm going to use the dot to add to the end of that uh, the um, path then to the file itself. Um, so in this case, it's just the name of the file, magnific popup.css, like that. Um, now, of course, if my file was in a subfolder, like say I had it in a CSS subdirectory, okay, then this path would be slash CSS slash magnifica popup.css. So the combination of this function and then this path here will output the entire path to that CSS file. Okay, and so what that does is it adds it, it adds this CSS file to the the list of, of style sheets to be included uh, in in the final output of my web page. So that there um, includes the magnific pop-up CSS file, and then we're also going to want to include the the magnific pop-up JavaScript file. And the way I'm going to do that is with a very similar function, but instead of WP and Q style, it's going to be uh, WP and Q script. Now this function uh, I'm going to give uh, the same first two parameters. So again, I'm just going to give this script a name so WordPress can identify it. Uh, again, I'll just call it Magnific Pop-Up. And the second parameter, uh, I'm just putting this on multiple lines so it's easier to read, uh, is again going to be um, the, the uh, path to the JavaScript file this time. So again, I'm going to use the get style sheet directory URI function and then append to that the path to my magnific pop-up um, JavaScript file and I've spelled that incorrectly here so I should change that okay so the path to that is going to be um, my theme directory or my style sheet directory and then uh, forward slash js forward slash magnific hyphen pop up dot js okay and then finally uh, I'm going to give this enqscript function a third parameter um, and this is because the third parameter tells WordPress if this script here relies on any other scripts and in this case um, magnific pop up does rely on the jQuery script um, so I can I can tell WordPress to make sure that the included that jQuery is included by 
adding as the third parameter an array of dependencies here, and then the only dependency here is jQuery. Okay, so that should include um, then uh, the Magnific pop-up JavaScript file, and then also, if it's not already included, the jQuery uh, file as well. Okay, so at this point I want to test that that uh, is all working, so I'm going to go to one of these categories and if I inspect the head section of my HTML, I should find somewhere in here Okay, there's my Magnific pop-up CSS file being included and Okay, there's my Magnific pop-up JavaScript file included. Okay. Now, I also need to include one more JavaScript file. Um, so I need to include a file which will allow me to write the JavaScript which uh, interacts with the page and then triggers uh, the Lightbox pop-up to show up. So I'm going to create that file again in my JavaScript uh, subfolder. So I'll go new file and it uh, doesn't really matter what you call this, um, I'm just going to call it post-popup.js and I'm also going to need to include this in my template file. So I'm going to go back to my category.php file and uh, really I'm just going to um, do the same thing that I just did to include the Magnific pop-up JavaScript file. So this one will include um, our custom JavaScript. So I'll duplicate those lines of code there and uh, I'll just change the parameters where relevant. So this will be a different name or post pop up. So these first parameters, this name is not really important, it just identifies your script to WordPress. Um, the, real, the important um, section is really this one here. Um, so uh, which is the which is the path to the file. So in this case it's all the same um, except here it's the file name is post pop up. JS. Okay, now um, in my post pop-up JS file, um, firstly to test this is working, I'm just going to um, put something in here. Uh, now I'm going to put all my code inside a jQuery ready function. Now this is going to look slightly different to what you might be used to um, just writing jQuery um, outside of WordPress, so you might be used to seeing something like this, document.ready function. Um, now, uh, we have to write this slightly differently to get everything to work the way that we're used to in, um, in WordPress, um, and uh, if you want to look into the reasons for that, um, then, then you can find them in the WordPress documentation. Um, Otherwise, you can just kind of take it for granted. But this is how we actually have to write our jQuery ready function, like this. Uh, so it's jQuery document dot ready, and then this part here is important: um, a function with the dollar sign as a parameter there, and that just ensures that um, rather than having to write all of our jQuery functions like this, that we can use the shorthand dollar sign like that. Um, so if you want to look into the, the reasons for that, then you can look up jQuery no conflict mode. Um, that's basically the reason, but uh, aside from that, it doesn't really matter that much, other than to say this is how we have to write our jQuery ready uh, function to get it to work nicely in WordPress for us. Uh, so I just want to make sure that this is working first. So I'm just going to put an alert there. Um, let's double check that this is all okay, and back to my 
website here and if I refresh okay there's my alert that gets thrown up and I should be able to test here um, because we're only including these scripts in the category.php template then I should only see that alert pop up on my dogs and my cats category any other page I shouldn't see that because those scripts won't be being included okay including other categories like my blog category which has its own uh, template file category blog okay so I know that's working correctly what I need to do now is write some JavaScript to basically respond to this mouse click and load up a light box pop-up with the post content rather than going to uh, a new page like this so um, let's just get rid of that alert there for starters now if we look back at our category template okay I've got this section here basically this is the section this is the link that I want to respond to on the mouse click and um, and and then throw the the light box pop up up. Um, so the easiest way to target this is by giving this link a class. So I'm just going to give this a class of um, <clears throat> we'll give this a class of uh, Ajax pop up link. Ajax pop-up link and uh, so I can use that class in my JavaScript file to actually target that so I'll go back to my post pop-up JavaScript file here and first of all I just want to test that I can target that those links so I'm going to do that using a jQuery selector targeting the class uh, Ajax pop-up link and just to test this I'm going to add a click handle a function with just a test alert again okay all right so so far all of my all my uh, all my jQuery code does here is select um, uh, any of the links with the class Ajax pop-up link and add a click handle a function so when I click them it should just throw up an alert that says just testing so I'll refresh this page to try that so click there's my link there's the alert that gets thrown up and then I hit OK now what you'll notice is that this is still going to the the page that it's linked to okay so in my category here the the href okay is, is outputting the permalink now I could just get rid of that um, to stop that from happening but what I actually what I want to try and do is make this still work without the JavaScript if I can uh, so if the user doesn't have JavaScript enabled or the JavaScript doesn't work for some reason I want it to basically fall back to a version where the old style still works um, so I'm going to leave that in and what I can do instead is um, go up to my um, click function here and what you can do to stop the default behavior of that link um, doing uh, going going to a new page uh, is you can simply return false from the function in this case the click function so now I should be able to go back refresh the page test any one of these links okay it throws up the alert and when I hit OK uh, it should not follow that link okay and it should work on any of these because they all have that same um, that same class it's calling that same bit of JavaScript code okay
Now, what I really want to do is, rather than just putting up an alert, I want to, when uh, this is clicked, um, create the pop-up. Now, it's actually something that's quite easy to do in Magnific Pop-up, and the section of the documentation that we want to look up is um, this Ajax type here. Um, so it should rewind a little bit. So basically there's different types of content that you can put inside of um, the Lightbox pop-up or the Magnific pop-up, um, like plain images, okay, for example, but we can also put in content that is loaded from a different file or from a different source entirely, okay, and that's so like this, where we can put HTML that's loaded from an external source in, and that's essentially what we want to do. Um, we want to we basically want um, these links here to follow this link but instead of sending the web browser that link we want it to return that content and then put it in um, a, a lightbox pop-up uh, so the way that we do that is um, using this example here uh, <clears throat> so so essentially there's our selector again but rather than adding a click function we use the function magnific pop-up and then we tell it that we want it to be this type of Ajax um, so I'm going to copy this part of the code here go back here and I'm going to get rid of my click function and instead I'm going to paste that function there so there's still our selector and then it's dot magnific pop-up and then um, we tell it here that the type is Ajax okay and now we can test what that actually looks like but before I do that I just noticed that my CSS file is actually in the wrong folder so I'm just gonna drag that down make sure it's actually inside my testing folder there and then make sure I've got that uploaded okay so that should all be correct now so uh, we can know we can now go and see what this actually looks like this effect here so I'll jump back over to the website and refresh the page now when I click on one of these links instead of opening up a new page as you can see it loads the content of our single post template in a lightbox pop-up okay so I can click the little X there and you can see that the original page is still there in the background so it's loading the content in uh, to the to the web page without actually going to a to a different um, to a different URL now there's still some problems with this because uh, as you can see uh, this is loading in everything that would otherwise have be loaded from go be that would otherwise have be loaded in from going to that link so uh, that's the entirety of the single.php template which includes the header and the footer now that's not actually something that I want to include in this so what I'm going to do is go back here to my uh, single.php template file and as you can see this is everything that's being loaded in there so uh, again I could uh, the easiest thing I suppose to do is just to comment out the uh, get header and get footer sections so now if I refresh the page again and load up one of these lightbox pop-ups okay it's just loading the content section of that template rather than the header and the footer section um, and that's okay I could do it this way but again if I want to keep this completely flexible and I still want to be able to load up the uh, single page template for other things um, for example, let's say I go to my blog. Okay, if I load up one of those, which is also using the single page template, now it doesn't include the header and footer. So what I want to be able to do is have essentially both behaviors. I want, if I'm loading up the the single .php template into a Lightbox pop-up, I want to be able to remove the header and footer. And otherwise, if I'm loading it up normally, uh, as I will be on on my blog post, then I want uh, to include the header and footer. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is um, 
actually by some uh, modifications to the uh, the single page template file. And what I what the single page template file really needs to know is whether the request has come from an AJAX call or whether it's just a normal call. So what I can do is uh, as part of this um, as part of this AJAX call here in my JavaScript. Uh, I can send along information with this request. So I could send along a variable, for example, that tells um, the single page template that um, it's being requested as an AJAX request and then to only send me the content without the uh, header and the footer. So to do that, I'm going to modify the, uh, the options object that we send in this magnificent pop-up call and just add some more parameters here. And I'm going to add uh, a parameter called, uh, actually called Ajax, which itself is going to be an object. And inside of that, I'm going to add an object called settings. And I'm going to put two, um, two, two values inside of this object. The first one is called type. Okay, and this um, lets me tell whether I want to use the get or the post method uh, of transferring the information. Um, so um, this is the same as, as any other HTTP request. You can look up what they mean. Uh, this is not so important for this example, but I'm just going to use get here. And um, the second uh, parameter I'm going to give it, or the second value in this object, is going to be called data. Okay, and it looks like uh, it itself is another object, and uh, I'm going to give it a value called request type, and set that to be AJAX. So this is actually the, the variable that we'll look for in the single .php template to figure out whether the request has come from from this method, uh, that is from as an AJAX call. Um, so if that request type exists, then the single template can assume that it's an AJAX call, and otherwise it will just assume the default that it's a, a normal call and it will load up the entire template. So what I can do then is uh, jump over to my uh, single.php file, okay, and what I can do is um, I'll get rid of these commented sections for a moment, so restore this back to how it originally was. and. Uh, First of all, what I want to do is um, pull out the variable, that AJAX request variable, to see if that exists and what, what the value is. Um, so to do that, I'm going to write a little bit of PHP that looks like this. So if, and you'll notice, um, okay, because I set this type to get, then the way that I retrieve this value in my PHP file here is using this PHP variable called dollar sign underscore get. Okay, if I'd use the post method, it'd be dollar sign underscore post. And then um, I'm going to say get request type, and that request type matches with this here. Okay, so if it's being sent from here, then that request type variable should be should be should exist and should be set to AJAX. So I can say if get request type is equal to AJAX, okay, then I can assume that this is an AJAX request. So I'll say so if it's an AJAX request, don't send the header and footer. So what I'm going to do is just create a temporary variable here called AJAX request this and set that equal to true. Okay, in the case that that, that, that get request type variable exists and that it's set to AJAX. 
So then any time further down I want to uh, conditionally include something, I can just say, so for example, if I want to conditionally include the header, I can, um, I can modify this bit of PHP um, so that there's another if statement. I can say if um, I can say if not AJAX request. Okay, so uh, in other words, I'm saying if AJAX request is not equal to true, then I will include this line get header. I'll put this inside of the bounds of this if statement. Okay, and so the alternative is it just won't get to this line and it won't include the header. And then I can do the same thing for the footer. So I can say if it's not an AJAX request, then call the function get footer and it will include the footer as well. Okay, so we should be able to test this now and go back to our test site the page okay and now when I click on this okay it sends me the contents of that single.php template but without the header and footer okay and I can test now also that if I go back over to the blog where these links are not being uh, they, they don't have any JavaScript triggering them they're not sending any Ajax request then it should just be a normal calling of that single.php template. When I click on this, okay, then the Ajax request variable doesn't exist, so it's not sent, not set to true, and it will uh, it will send me the, the header and the footer along with the content. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to getting this method to work. Um, So basically the, basically the two important parts are, are this bit of JavaScript which selects the Ajax pop-up links in our category template and then, um, and then triggers a magnific pop-up here and then sends along with the request this bit of information, the request type uh, is equaling Ajax, so that when it does request the page from our single.php template uh, it can tell whether or not it was an Ajax request and then conditionally send, will always send the content, but it will conditionally only send the header and footer if it's not an Ajax request. Okay, now there's just um, one more thing that I'm going to add to this example, and that is at the moment um, I have to click on each of these individually and I, I click outside to minimize them uh, but we can also get this to work so that we have little navigation um, buttons which allow us to navigate between each of these without having to close them down individually uh, and that's uh, also very simple uh, to add and the way we do that is uh, back in this little bit of JavaScript where we send the, the Ajax request uh, I'm going to again add another uh, another setting to this uh, object of, of options that we send the magnific pop-up function, and you you can read about this option if you look in the magnific pop-up documentation under the gallery section, okay, and it shows you how to how to enable that. But essentially, all we have to do is add another option here and um, called gallery okay and that itself is going to be an object which has a um, which has a, uh, a variable called enabled and we set that to true okay and just by doing that if I refresh again all right then we should get these options with these little forward and back arrows to go um, back and forward between uh, between the um, between the different the different uh, elements 
that are all that all have the magnific pop-up enabled. So essentially, you can go back and forth like they were a gallery, all of the same type of object. So there's that option there as well. Um, now the one thing I should mention that I haven't changed yet in this example is there's a difference if I go back to my category template okay and we look at the we look at the link tag here where I put the class of Ajax pop-up link um, and now I've still got this second link down here uh, off of the uh, off of the um, the caption on the image which I haven't given this class here um, now if I click on that as you can see that retains the normal behavior of just going directly to the page um, so I could also add the the same class equals Ajax pop-up link to that second uh, anchor tag there link and so that in addition will be picked up by this selector here and that should also operate as a magnific pop-up trigger so if I refresh that now, and if I click on any of these captions, you can see that that pops up. Um, now there is a slight problem with this in that you'll notice if I have this gallery mode and I'm going through these, it looks like we get a repeat of every one. And that's because it's going through each one of those links that are basically found by this selector. And because there's two for each item, that's why we're getting the duplicates. Um, so if I wasn't using a gallery, this wouldn't really be a problem, but because I am, this now becomes an issue. Uh, so the easiest thing to do to fix that um, is uh, simply just to have the one link. So if I go back to the uh, category here, um, okay, then uh, what I'm going to do is simply get rid of this second link here okay so I'm still going to output the title or output the caption but uh, I'm just going to have the one link and if I still want this to act as a link I'm just going to wrap that whole thing in this first link like that there okay and now I should be able to come back and refresh this and uh, it should now work just showing up uh, one at a time again okay and you can see that my stars are broken now simply because uh, that's no longer a, 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 a an A tag so it's no, no longer getting the original star but that's simply a matter of going in and, and adjusting uh, our star sheet so I can do that by going to the web page um, and inspecting with my code inspection tools and finding out where that style is actually being applied and it looks like it's being applied in this style here on line 362 of my style.css file so all I'm going to do is go in and modify that style so it contains some color information for that uh, so I'll go and load up my style sheet there and there's line 362 with that particular uh, that particular style and I'm just going to add some color information say and and I'll just add some some other information um, adjust it so I'll, I'll give it a Oh, basically you can see the you can see the original style on the anchor tag that was down here so all I'm really going to do is copy those styles and add them back up here okay and then I can get rid of that and that should take care of that color okay there it is okay so that's now retaining our old style but it also now acts as a lightbox link and I don't have the issue of having duplicated items, seemingly duplicated items in my gallery. Now the only other thing I'd 
really probably change about this at this point is um, now the background color for this bit of content doesn't really suit um, being in an overlay. Okay, it still works for uh, it still works for say example the blog post. Okay, for the single page here, it's using this background, but because it's transparent um, and because it's overlaid on over the existing background, then it's not really providing us with enough contrast. So what I'm going to do is um, go back into my code here and I'm going to make one small change to my uh, sorry to my single.php file. Okay, and it's going to be along the same lines of these other changes that I've made, where basically I'll conditionally change something depending on whether it's an Ajax request or not. And all I want to do is add a, a class here basically that I can use to style it differently if it's if it's the content being loaded in as an Ajax post versus as a normal just normal single page template or single post template. So I can put this in here just by doing the same thing. Okay, I can say uh, if, so in this case I want to say if it is an Ajax request, so if this Ajax request variable is equal to true, okay, then uh, I want to um, I'll say echo and then the name of the class. So I'm going to say, um, I'll just give it a class name of Ajax. So what this will mean now is that this particular div, if it's being loaded in an Ajax post, will um, contain an additional class of, of Ajax, which I can then use to style it differently. So I can then come back to my, or we can see that, I'll go refresh this. Let's have a look at that. So oh, got a problem here. Uh, Right, I just got my semicolon in the wrong place. That was all. So let's try that again. Okay, there's my content loading. Okay, so I should be able to inspect. So I'll go back here. Should be able to inspect this element here. And there's my div. And you can see that when this is being loaded in by Ajax now, it's outputting that extra class Ajax there. Now, if I was to go to, uh, if I was to go to any other single post entry like this, and look that up again, there's my main, uh, my main div again, and you can see in this case it's not outputting the Ajax class. Okay, so what that allows me to do is, as I said before, conditionally style, add styles that will only be applied uh, to this Ajax version of the content. So using this div with the ID of main, I'm going to go back to my style.css and I'm going to create a new style um, called, uh, well essentially what I want to change is, I've got this main content section here. Okay, and this defines my my background color. Okay, which at the moment is is too light or too transparent. So I'm going to create a style to override that. So it'll be dot ajax, and then main content, and I'll make the background. Just a, a a darker and more opaque color. So let's say RGBA of 10, 10, 10, and 0 0.5, whereas before it was I think 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. So much more transparent. Now if I refresh this, I should be able to see the difference that that makes. Okay, so much 
much more opaque and uh, give me better contrast between the, the foreground and, and the background. Okay, and um, there's probably there's probably a couple more things I need to change. Like, as you can see, this title is still an active link uh, on the single post page, um, which links to the original post. Now I can get rid of that. I'm not really sure why I would want that anyway on either version. Um, there's not much point of a single post linking to itself, so I'm just going to get rid of that entirely from the single.php template. Uh, so here we are, I'm just going to get rid of that link there, like that, and just leave it as a normal heading. Okay, so now it doesn't link, and it should be the same for any of these other ones as well. Okay, and that's pretty much that's pretty much the effect that I want, uh, and this should work on this category, any category that basically uses my category.php template. So in this case, it's the dogs category and the cats category. Both get this effect. Okay, but the blog category, which uses a different template, it uses this category blog template. Okay, just retains the normal behavior that I already had of loading up a single post in its own page. Okay, so that's how you get WordPress content to load up via Ajax in uh, a Lightbox pop-up. Um, so just to recap the steps, I suppose we needed to uh, download the Magnific pop-up uh, JavaScript and CSS files and as well create our own JavaScript file um, to write our own little bit of JavaScript. We needed to uh, include those files in the category.php template because that's the one where we wanted it wanted it to be active and we did that using the functions wp and qstyle and wp and qscript. Okay and then simply um, using the WordPress uh, functions to get the directory and then and then pointing to the specific file names. So there's our CSS file, the Magnific pop-up JavaScript file, and our own JavaScript file. Okay, and then we write this little bit of uh, JavaScript ourselves. So there's the jQuery document.ready function that's slightly modified to work nicely with WordPress. And then we use this selector to select any links that have this class of Ajax pop-up link. And then we call this function magnific pop-up and sending it a bit of information it takes care of all the rest of the stuff of, of actually displaying the content. Um, so we had to make a few modifications to our category.php file. First of all we had to uh, add this class of Ajax pop-up link to any of the links that we wanted to trigger a pop-up and we had to make some changes to our single.php file so that different content was sent back depending on whether it was an Ajax request or uh, a regular request so that we could use it for both. Now if, if your site only uses an Ajax request then you don't have to go through that extra step um, but, but I demonstrated that just to show you that it is possible to have both. Um, and I guess the important part of that was that this this little bit here where we send it the settings in this Ajax object and then this settings object where we set the type to get and then in this data object this is probably the most important line there this request type okay that that there request type and that value of Ajax matches up exactly with this here so this um, request type um, a member of the get um, array that exists in PHP. It's just the way that we, we pull that content out um, and testing if it's set to that value of Ajax and then if it is set to Ajax then we know it to be an Ajax request and we can write conditional statements throughout the template to do different things. In our case either providing or not providing the header and footer 
and additionally to conditionally include a an extra class uh, in the in on this div uh, for Ajax requests so that we could style in our case the background slightly differently. Okay, so that's pretty much everything um, everything that you need to know uh, in order to get that effect. Okay, and you can put basically any content inside of here. Okay, anything that can be HTML and CSS can go inside of here. So it can be as simple as images, it could be videos, or it could be a map, um, or it could be, as in this case, a post content with a combination of, of text and images. Okay, so that is uh, getting WordPress content to load up in a Lightbox pop-up.